morning. What a beautiful day it is to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Brother Eli, would you collect the Sunday school offering? For the mother of Eli. We've been looking at evangelism in the past. We looked at the need for evangelism. We looked at how it's not a suggestion, but God commands us to go and tell others about Christ. We looked at before anything happens, it all begins with us. We are the ones to take the gospel message to the lost, those who do not know about Christ. As we begin to get ready to prepare ourselves to take the gospel the message to other people, we know what we believe and why we believe it. We study the Word of God. But once we do that, then we begin looking at, well, what do they believe? Not from the aspect of trying to adopt it into our belief system, not a matter of trying to, um, maybe this is good for me or that's not, or, but it's a matter of trying to understand where they're coming from. That way when we talk to them, we have a better grasp and we are able to better witness to them and show them Jesus Christ. We've been looking and studying about the Catholics. And when we look at the Catholics, we know that they make up a large population in this world system. We can look at the area in which we live and there are a lot of Catholics in the area where we live. Whether they refer to themselves as Roman Catholic, Russian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, there's a lot of Catholics. When we look, start looking at the Catholic Church, we discovered several things. We discovered that they are the only religion in the world with their own government. We might say that the Turkish government has a Muslim influence or is Muslim, but the Tur Turkey as a whole is not based around Muslim as a religion. It was based around people. Vatican, Vatican City was not based around people, but rather it was built around a religion. And when we look at Vatican City, of course, it's the country where um, the Roman Catholics uh, are based out of. You have the Pope there residing as the president. They have their own libraries, military, so forth and so forth. They are a religion like no other. They have their own police, banking, Pope, who is the president, and as we begin diving a little bit farther, we've discovered other things as well. We know that the Pope is in charge of the Roman Catholic Church. He's held in such high regard that they claim that he's in charge by the church, in charge of the church. Uh, he is in charge of the church, and they based it upon the verse where Jesus said to Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, which we all know that Jesus was actually referring to himself, but regardless, they take it in that manner, since the Pope is a successor to Peter, he is in charge of the Pope. We see in the 1970s that there was a split. In the Catholic Church, you have the Reformed Catholics and you have the Orthodox Catholics. But regardless of what the Roman Catholic Church say, they might have had a change in the 1970s, but did they really have a change? No, they had a change of some traditions, but not of beliefs. They might have changed the way that they did things a little bit, but what they held um, near and dear still stayed exactly the same. The Catholic Church as a whole did not change at all. The doctrines that they have today are the exact same ones that they had in 1945. And we stated that we need to study what they believe and why they believe it, so we can have a better grasp on how to bring them to Christ. And we've seen that last week because we began looking at the Roman Catholic Church. And when we look at their doctrine of grace, we found that the Catholics claim that the sinner is justified or saved by grace, not on the account of his or any human merit, but purely, purely through the merits of Jesus Christ. Does that sound like what we believe? Does that sound like what the Bible teaches? 
That sounds exactly what the Bible teaches. But the more that we study to see what they believe, we find that there is a difference in definition on several words, and that changed everything. And when we started looking at that, we found that it wasn't solely and purely built on the grace of Jesus Christ when it comes to salvation for the Catholics, but rather it was only a step two, and you still had to fulfill this step, this step, this step, this step, and this step. And it was all at the end, when it was all said and done, it was all based on works. It wasn't purely the salvation and grace of Jesus Christ alone, but rather they would flip-flop to works. What does the Bible inform us about works? Do you remember? Even if faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. But what does it say in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9? Do you remember that portion? I'm not picking on you particularly, brother. I'm trying to make you jog your memory. I'm just trying to switch to a different verse. Because this is a little bit more concrete. By faith are you saved. And then when we get to verse 9, it clarifies it completely. It's like Jesus, the Holy Ghost already knew what's coming, but he already did. But he said, not at all works, lest any man would boast. So he said, by faith are you saved, and it's like he knew exactly what you're thinking. Not at works, because otherwise you boast. So we have it very clear in Scripture. Salvation is through faith alone. And we receive it through the grace of Jesus Christ. And it doesn't matter what we do to try to obtain that grace. It's through faith and through Jesus Christ giving us the gift of life. That is all it is. Not a works. For the Catholics, works are a must get into heaven. All right, let me rephrase it. For the Catholics, works are a must to obtain your salvation. For the Bible-believing Christian... And when I say that, just to distinguish, based on the true word of God, works are a product of salvation. They don't, they don't make us saved, but they add to our salvation. If we are saved, then we will do the works. If we don't do the works, so we get saved. Was that confusing, or did that make sense? Sometimes I get a little flip-flop. Sometimes I can't get my own words out. But, like I said, we study to see what other people believe so we can better confront them with the Word of God. When we look at the Catholics, they changed the definition of several words and based it upon works and not really the grace of Jesus Christ and faith alone. We begin, we talk about several, at least one of the, their seven sacraments and that was water baptism last week. And what do we know about water baptism? Based upon the word of God? You cannot be saved by it. It is not simply a public declaration of your salvation. That you are following Jesus Christ. But yet they believe in infant baptism. That's why we do infant dedication. Because the Baptist. The Roman Catholics believe that when you're baptized, it adds to your salvation. It gets you a little bit farther in your work, walk with Christ. But infants can't make that decision. So we do infant baptism. Not infant dedication. So we see that going against the Catholics as well. Baptism does not save an individual. It does not add to it. It is merely an outward showing that we decide to follow Jesus Christ, that we accept his salvation. And when we looked at Scripture last week, we've seen that salvation, um, repentance of sin had to come before the baptism in Acts 2.38. Believing the gospel was necessary for believing bab um, biblical baptism. We've seen that Scripture itself declares that baptism itself cannot remove sins, only the blood of Jesus Christ. And baptism does not make us children of God. And once again, we looked at the thief on the cross. He did not get baptized, and yet Jesus said, This day you shall be with me in paradise. So let's begin looking at the Bible. 
the doctrine of the Bible according to the Catholics. How do they view the Bible? The Catholics, the Catholics claim there are still many Christians who base their Christianity on the Bible alone. However, to try to make the Bible the sole source of one's religious guidance is unreasonable and impossible. And that's taking on how to explain what you believe as a Catholic. According to the, a small book that was written by the Knights of Columbus, the Bible is not our sole guide. In the book, the Bible is a Catholic book. The New Testament writings were never meant to be the sole and final authority for Christ's revealed truth. The Catholics teach that the church tradition, that church tradition has equal authority with the Bible. This was made irreversible. This was made an irreversible article of faith by the Council of Trent, which states the teaching of the church will always be in keeping with the teaching of the scriptures. And it is through the teaching of the church that we understand more fully the truths of sacred scripture. When we look at it from a Catholic perspective, to the Catholic Church belongs the final word in the understanding and meaning of the Holy Spirit in the words of the Bible. The Roman Catholic Church has the power to expand doctrine apart from the Bible, and they also claim that the sacred scripture is the word of God as it's put down in writing under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost and tradition transmitted transmit in its entirety this word of God which has been entrusted to the apostles by and in your notes it says Christ the Lord that's supposed to be Christ he did not change his name we know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever so he did not change his name and the Holy Spirit Thus it comes about that the church does not draw her certainty about all revealed truths from the Holy Scriptures alone. Hence, both Scripture and tradition must be accepted and honored with equal feeling and devotion and reverence. Scripture and tradition stand together as the one sacred deposit of the Word of God, which is committed to the church. So what is the Catholic Church claiming when it comes to the Bible itself? First of all, that Catholic tradition has the exact same authority that the Bible does. So all those words in red in your Bible, in the New Testament, where Jesus spoke, tradition has the exact same authority as those. I use that example, of course, we're using the whole Word of God. It doesn't matter what words they are, they're all the Word of God. But it has the exact same authority. So whatever the Catholic Church has as a tradition, that is as much the Word of God as the Bible itself. It has that much importance on your salvation. And the thing that stuck out to me here is the Catholic Church dictates what is necessary for salvation. Their word is gold. Whatever they say, it has the exact same equal authority as the Word of God. If we want to break that down into the time frame that some of us have lived through, almost like communist Russia. You believe what we tell you to believe, and that's about it. They used to have, they changed up our break or my work a little bit, and they took the television down, which of course on the TV they had all the announcements for the day, the propaganda, and what we were doing, yada, yada, yada. And I heard, started harassing them the other day that it's like communist Russia in here. They took away the little bit of information we had. <laughs> when you look at the Catholic Church, that's pretty much what they're telling you. You know, whatever we tell you, that is what it is. You know, whatever you think, don't do what you think. You check with us first. We'll tell you what the Bible tells you, states. We'll tell you what it means. They have, and because of that, they place their word and tradition on the exact same equal authority as the Bible. So when they tell you that you have to pay penance to get someone out of purgatory that has just as much power as the Word of God. But what does the Bible state concerning the Bible itself? Second Timothy 3.15. If someone please read that. Second Timothy 3.15. Brother, I think I meant 16. All scriptures 
given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So the Bible is clear on its own authority. It tells us that it is necessary for reproof, for doctrine, for instruction. It is very clear. It doesn't state that man's tradition is necessary. It doesn't state one church over the other. It says that the Bible itself is necessary for telling you what the doctrines are, what God uh, wants us to know, how God reveals himself to us, and that the Bible is the final authority on all things when it comes to spiritual matters. This is completely contrary to what the Catholic Church teaches. Can you still have the house to open, brother? Yeah. You want to read verse 17 as well, please? The man of God, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished in all good works. So the Bible itself teaches us to, that it furnishes us, it refines us unto good works. So the Word of God is the final authority. And the Bible itself, once again another typo, it is not tall, it is all. But the Bible shows itself to be all that is needed to be perf to be a perfect man. It doesn't state that we have to do anything else or follow some other book. It says, states that itself is necessary. It is what's going to change us. And when we look at the Word of God, God, I hate to say put fail states in there, but He is very clear on putting instructions on the Word of God itself. In Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 32, someone get Deuteronomy 12, 32, and someone else, Revelation 22, 18 and 19. Revelation 22, 18 and 19. So what does the Bible itself state concerning itself? Or what did God tell us in his work concerning the Bible? Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. What does he inform us in Revelation chapter 22, 18 and 19? For I testify unto every man that hears the words that any man, the words of the prophecy of the book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. If any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Once again, God gives us another warning. Don't add away from the book or take, don't add to the book, don't take away from it. In fact, it gets a little bit more intense. If you do, plagues and curses are going to come upon you. This is my holy book. These are my instructions. They are safeguarded for your protection and they are meant for you. You don't need anything else to instruct you as far as tradition or anything like that. But the Word of God is sacred. It tells you how to have eternal life. It leads you into the path of righteousness for His namesake. This is completely contrary to what the Catholic Church teaches. They add things onto it. And people call us legalistic. What does the Bible state concerning uh, in Isaiah 8 and verse 20? In Isaiah 8 20. If they do not speak according to the word of God, they have no light in him. This is a little bit different from what the Catholics are teaching. They're teaching that tradition is right inside of the Holy Scriptures and have the right same authority. So if you aren't baptized, you're not going to make it in heaven. If you're not married, you're not going to make it into heaven. And let me back up. You'll probably have... If I had to guess a lower place in purgatory, because you don't get to go to heaven right away with the Catholics anyhow. You have to go to purgatory. Unless you're the Pope. Then you get to bypass. So pray and hope that one day you become the Pope. Light a candle and say a prayer for somebody to get out of purgatory. These are all add-ons to the Word of God. They are completely contrary. 
If we go back to the Reformation, Martin Luther never wanted to start another separate denomination or religion. He really didn't. The more you study it out, because time and time he confronted the Catholic Church about changing their ways, doing what the Bible stated, and they didn't want to do it. The Word of God is clear on what needs to be done when it comes to salvation. It states that it and it alone is the final authority on salvation, on getting closer to God. It is the inspired Word of God, and God put safeguards on it, saying that if you add to it, I will come and get you. And that's a quick, quick reference, but basically, it is. Judgment belongs to God. He's told us that time and time alone, that don't go offending yourself, uh, defending yourself, that judgment is reserved for him, him alone. So as we look at the scriptures, we find that the scriptures themselves are the inspired word of God. You don't need anything else to acquire salvation, or any, there's nothing else that holds equal value to them as well. Tradition won't get you saved. Doing this good works won't get you saved. Following the word of God, doing what it states, it is the final authority, and it is the word of God, true word of God. Now let's look at doctrine concerning the interpretation of the Bible. Let's see what the Catholics have to say when it comes to how to interpret the Bible. The Catholics teach that the Bible cannot be interpreted by ordinary men, but must be accepted as interpreted by the officials of the Catholic Church down through history. Almost once again, in my mind, it comes back to communist Russia. You believe what we tell you to believe, and that's about it. And dictatorship. The Council at Trent declared, down through, declared, furthermore, in order to remain petulant spirits, it decrees that no one relying on his own skill shall presume to interpret the said sacred scripture contrary to that sense which Holy Mother Church, whose it is to judge the true sense and interpretation, of the Holy Scriptures hath held and I don't know what that is and hold. So when we look at the Catholic Church, what do they state when it comes to the interpretation of Scripture? It's not for the common man. You're not going to be able to do it on your own. If you have any questions, ask us. We'll tell you what it states. Through faith are you saved, not a word. Yes, but you got to read between the lines. That doesn't include the seven sacraments. That's probably what they would tell you. They're going to interpret it however they want to interpret it. You do not have the right as common man to interpret the scriptures for yourself. In fact, they bring in a lot of you out of Bible. Well, I think they'll let you have it now, but they don't encourage you to read it. Years ago, they bring in a lot of the out of Bible. Yeah, I believe that. And if they had to, the, the priest of Bible, he, he said, what I tell you. Yep. Yep, exactly. But what does the Bible itself state when it comes to the interpretation of Scripture itself? How about... If someone would please read John 8, 81 and 32... John 8, 31 32. And someone else, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 10 through 14. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 14.
then unto us by his spirit, for the spirit is certain. All things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a, of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of which, which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things we also speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So basically when we get down to it, we can read the scriptures for ourselves, and we can know what they state, because the Spirit of God will reveal it to us. Not some other man will reveal it to us, but the Spirit of God will reveal it to us. So the scripture is clear. We don't need somebody else to come up and tell us what the Word of God is. I mean, don't get me wrong, we have teachers, we have preachers that guide us in our path, but when it comes to the Word of God, it's not like the pastor's going to get up and tell you, contrary, you can't know that for yourself. You're never going to hear that from me. I told you guys plenty of times, you know, say the scriptures for yourself, make sure that it all lines up, it doesn't matter. If I'm teaching, the pastor's teaching, or somebody else, always be on guard. The enemy's out to deceive. So the word of God is clear. We don't need somebody else to tell us what the word of God states. When it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, it means exactly that. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. When it said, by faith are you saved, not of works, it means exactly that. By faith are you saved, not of works. I realize as we study, more things might get revealed through um, the Holy Ghost revealing things to us through study. But still, we don't need somebody else to tell us, well, that passage doesn't mean that. Yes, it does. It's as simple as that. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Well, it happened over millions of years. No, that's not what my Bible says. It was a young earth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Well, God created it and then just left to go. Well, I see him in the garden fixing up things. I see him still working in the lives of man today. It's not what my Bible says. What the Bible states is clear. We don't need somebody else to come and say, well, that's not what that means. It means this. Catholic Bible itself. 